In the previous video we saw how to mount this wardrobe cabinet to the wall, so in today's video we're going to finish the project by making and installing the doors and drawers. Let's start to make the drawers. The wardrobe is going to have 4 drawers with the same dimensions, so we will need 8 sides, 4 backs, 4 fronts and 4 drawer bottoms. I'm discounting 23mm of clearance between the drawer side and the side of the cabinet opening and 1 cm of clearance from the wall. The space between each drawer is around 2 cm and the front is going to cover that. For the drawer bottom I'm using 9mm plywood which is strong enough for this section. I trace out the dimensions and cut the pieces slightly bigger so that I can flush trim the edges with the router. Once we have all these pieces, we can start assembling the drawers. I'm not using any special joinery for this case, just glue and screws. But don't worry, it doesn't mean that it won't be strong. First I attach the sides to the back. I put a good amount of glue on both surfaces to join and set the sides square with the back. Then I add 3 screws from each side. Make sure that the edges on the top and at the bottom are flush. Next I attach the drawer bottom with glue and brad nails. Be careful to keep the front edge of the plywood flush with the sides and to keep the same back dimension on the front. There was a cracked corner in one of the drawers, but we are going to fix that with CA glue. This is the one by Starbond. So I just put a little bit of glue on the cracked corner and hold it for a few seconds. And that's it. That won't be noticeable after we sand it down. Before attaching the fronts, I'm gonna trim out the plywood edges using a flush trim router bit. When trimming with this router bit, you will match the edges exactly and make a huge difference in the quality of the final cut. Now it's time to attach the fronts. They are bigger than the rest of the box because they cover the drawer slides and the space between each drawer. I see the drawer body on the front and measure the space I need out of it. Then I make pilot holes so I can drive the screws in. I also added an L-shaped bracket inside the drawer to have more support on the bottom. The following step is to fill the nail and screw holes with wood filler. I let it dry around 1 hour and continue sanding using a 100 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. The doors and drawers will have the same white finish as the rest of the cabinet. So I spray 2 coats of white primer, then let it dry for some minutes and continue with a smooth sanding. Finally I cover the drawers with a full wet coat of white polyurethane varnish. On the next day, I install the drawers to the wardrobe. The first what I'm doing is installing the drawer handles. I locate the holes in the center of the front and screw the handle from the inside of the box. Notice that the L-shaped bracket is not painted. That's because I remove it before applying the finish. The next step is to attach the drawer slides right in the center of the box sides. I flip it over and install the other side. I'm using ball bearing slides, so I press the lever release and pull out the side I'm attaching to the drawer box. The widest part will be attached to the sides of the cabinet opening. I measure the distance from the top to the drawer slides and transfer that measure to the cabinet. This is a little bit tricky because sometimes you need to unscrew and screw again until you got the slides on the right place. Then line up the slides and push the drawer until you hear the click indicating that the slide parts have re-engaged. Next I continue installing the remaining drawers. Here is a closer look of the measure I'm transferring to the cabinet opening, plus 2mm I'm adding for the space between each front. When lining up the slides and pushing the drawer back, probably you feel that it's a little bit hard to push but after a couple of calls the drawer slides will have a smooth and quiet operation. Once I'm done with the drawers, I work on the clothes rod. I cut the rod to length and lock it the center of the wardrobe to attach the rod brackets. 
One of them will be on the concrete wall, so I need to drill the holes first, for I can insert the wooden towels and drive the screws in. To attach the other side, I need to insert the rod in the first bracket, because these are closed brackets and won't let me insert the rod after I attach them to the cabinet. I come back to my shop to make the cabinet doors. I'm gonna be using 7cm slat for making the doors frame and 9mm plywood for the panels. There will be 7 doors in this wardrobe, 4 on the upper side, 1 over the drawers and 2 big ones on the closet section. I'm cutting the slats to length using a 45 degrees angle cut. I use a 9mm rabbit bit to make a groove for the plywood. This group got to be right in the center of the frame and make sure to make it on the inner side which is the shorter side of the 45 degrees cut. The groove is 1 cm deep and we will take that into the measurements of plywood. I trace out the panel to size. You can make the cuts with a jigsaw or a circular saw or a table saw, whatever tool you have and feel comfortable to use it. We can clean up the edges with a hand planer or a jointer if the cuts are not perfectly straight. At this point you may have a better idea on how the assembly is going to be. I set all the pieces in place and put some glue on the inside of the groove. Then I insert the panel in the first side and continue with the other parts of the frame. You wanna make sure that all the corners match perfectly and the surface on the joint is nice and flush. Then I drill pilot holes to screw the joint from the bottom side and the top side. I'm using only one screw on each corner. The door has the same look on both sides. Once the 7 doors are assembled, I drill the holes for the cupboard hinges. I'm using a 35mm Forstner bead and drilling the holes 4mm from the edge of the door. The two biggest doors will have 4 hinges, that means 4 holes, and the other ones will have only 2. Now it's time to send the doors. Use a 100 grit sandpaper and take as much time as necessary to ensure a smooth result. I'm sanding by hand the edges I couldn't reach with the orbital sander. Next I apply the white primer. I wet some minutes and spray another coat to cover all the surface in white. Remember to sand with a 360 degree sandpaper after the second coat of primer. Then I apply the polyurethane white varnish that has a semi-gloss finish. Let it dry for 24 hours before installing the doors. I think installing the doors is the most satisfactory part of this project. I start by attaching the hinges to the door in the way you are watching right now. That's pretty simple to do, just make sure both hinges are facing the same direction. Next I mark out the position of the handle on the opposite side. I drill the holes on those marks so I can insert the screws through the holes and attach the handle from the other side. I'm going to install the upper doors first because they are harder to reach, but the order of that doesn't really matter. I hold the door in place using only two screws, then check if it closes properly and secure the hinges with the remaining screws. I repeat the process to the other doors, make the necessary adjustments to align the four doors and keep the same space between them. The next door I'm going to install is the one over the drawers. It's also a small door, but wider than the previous ones. As I did it before, I installed the hardware to the door first. These kind of hinges have two screws that allow us to make some adjustments once they are already installed. So be patient and do your best. Now it's time for the main doors. They are almost 2 meters high, that's why they need at least 4 hinges for a better support. The handle is located on the half of the door height. These doors are 5 cm from the floor, so I can use my foot to hold the door while I'm attaching the hinges to the cabinet. Check that everything is alright and continue with the other side door. Make the last adjustments if necessary.
Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.